Welcome to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 23rd of July, 2017. We had a really good question this week from Steve who asked, uh, first of all, I recently assisted a nonprofit group set up some recording sessions with a Rode podcaster mic and overall it's gone well. However, they always seem to pick the noisiest places such as a room with a giant air conditioner. <laughs> I feel like overall I've done an okay job re removing the noise, but I struggle with making the speakers not sound like aliens. When he's, I assume Steve, when you say speakers, you mean the people talking as opposed to monitors. I have carefully watched your Sound for Dialogue course and it has helped immensely, but I'd love to see how you might handle this small clip I've included in this mail. Not because I want you to do all the work, but just to watch how someone with more skill than I would deal with it. The small clip I attach is right out of the recorder. No effects applied. Okay, this is what we have here from Steve. Steve, thanks for the question. Let's have a listen. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangiosarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. Okay, first thing, we're going to go ahead and increase the amplitude here. Now, some people will freak out and say, wow, don't do that. You're just making the noise floor worse. Yes, I understand that. We are working with a 32-bit processing audio application, Audition. That's okay. It's not like um, we're, gonna, we're, doing, we're working on how we're going to manage that noise floor. Um, and we're going to have to... to you know, apply some loudness to the dialogue at some point anyway. It just wasn't loud enough as it was. You can see here it's peaking at about minus 18, so there's no way that's going to be loud enough in most uh, most cases. So go ahead and apply some amplification here. We want to keep our amplitude to the point where we're not clipping, of course, but peaking somewhere around minus 1.5 would be great. Okay, that's good there. Let's listen now. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to Sounds like there's a jet engine behind the person talking the talent here. <laughs> um, Steve, wow, that's a that's a, this is a really hard one. Um, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually open up the spectral view. You just grab this little bar at the bottom here, pull that up, and we can see a lot of noise. All so so the dialogue here is represented in yellow and kind of orange, and the rest of this stuff is noise, so all this material here is noise. We also have what looks like some hum here, these horizontal lines. And you can see there are a couple of them. It looks like one is at about 850 hertz, and then the second one is double that, which is how harmonics uh, often work. Um, so this is at about, uh, what, 17 hertz. Um, so that's something we can work on. Uh, we also have plenty of material down in the low frequencies as well. So first thing I would do, um, before I use the noise reduction plugin, I'll typically do a couple of other things first. We have a hum issue I want to take care of first, and we have um, just some, some noise here in the, in the higher frequencies. Everything above about 16 kilohertz here, that's just noise. You see that kind of uh, that stuff up here? Looks like uh, some dark purple material. Not that most people can hear that. Um, and in fact, but, but some people can hear above 16 kilohertz. A lot of younger people can. <laughs> uh, I can't, but a lot of other, other people can. So we'll want to take care of that. And we'll want to get rid of this low frequency stuff. So that's a good job for our parametric equalizer. And here we'll just use a high pass filter. It turns out that's already on. I just pop that on here. Um, I've got it currently set to, let's go extreme. We're going to go extreme at 48 decibels per octave. I've got it set to 82 hertz. I don't want to cut into her voice too much, um, and we'll sweep that back and forth here to kind of tune that in just a minute. Also, have turn on the high pass or sorry, the low pass filter, and we can do a similar thing here. We can go pretty extreme, and we'll go. We'll take it up to. We'll center it around about let's say 1800 or 18 kilohertz, which is 18,000. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start playing through. I'm going to sweep at least the low pass filter or the high pass filter back and forth. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangiosarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangiosarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. Okay, so with a woman's voice, we can usually go a little bit higher with a high pass filter. So what we're doing is we're essentially cutting everything below 127 hertz. Um, I might pull that back a little bit more. Maybe go more than 116. Let's play again. We lost our previous dog, Apollo. 
that's probably going to be fine. Let's check the, the low pass filter. I'm not going to be able to hear this. <laughs> um, but again, we can see visually very well. There really isn't any sort of dialogue above 16 kilohertz. So I'm not too worried about that. We'll go ahead and apply that. Okay. Um, it's hard to see in this view, but it did definitely cut some of the this high frequency stuff off, and it looks like it's lightened up the stuff below 100 hertz. So we're going to call that good. Let's attack this hum issue next. Now, as again, as I mentioned before, um, we'll come into this the um, noise reduction menu to dehummer. Um, as I mentioned before, it looks like you just use the frequency graph here. So the primary frequency of the hum appears to be right here. You can see this horizontal line. If I read the graph here, that looks like it's at about 850 hertz. So double that is going to be 17. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, I set this to 850. Because I see two horizontal lines, I want to set um, the number of harmonics to two. You can change that to anything you need to. In our case, we're really only seeing two of them, really. So that's what we're going to stick with there. Uh, I'm going to set the gain to, let's go minus 40. We'll start there. I'm then going to choose output the hum only. And I just want to, with, I've, with these settings here, I want to go ahead and listen to it and see what we're hearing. We should hear this whining sound from a fan. Sure enough, hear that? <laughs> so now we can turn that off and let's play again and see what happens as we remove this. Beginning of April, we lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangiosarcoma. When she was diagnosed at the beginning of April, we lost our previous... It's taking that kind of whine away from the fan a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Um, we could apply a harmonic slope, but what's interesting here is that this seems like the harmonic is actually a little bit more prominent than the fundamental. So I'm going to I'm going to change the harmonic slope to zero. I want to do just as much reduction on the second one as the first one. Go ahead and apply. And you can see visually now where there used to be a bit of a yellow or orangish line. It's actually removed some of that pretty nicely. Okay, so that's our next step. Now I will come in and I will use the noise reduction. And of course, the first thing we need to do before I do that is select a noise print area. So here's a part with no dialogue. Let's come back up in here. Capture the noise print. Okay. Now we can come back into the noise reduction, choose the noise reduction process. All right. Uh, now we have a couple of things here. So scale, we'll leave it linear and channel at channel one. That's fine. Um, what I want to do, the two main settings I want to affect are the noise reduction and the reduce by. So the reduce by is the number of decibels you want to reduce the noise. And we want to be fairly conservative here. What I find is that when you go pretty extreme, that's when you make people start sounding like aliens. Um, and so you have to, uh, my, my thinking is on noise like this, which is really, really extreme, pretty extreme, I, I guess I would say. <laughs> and it's broadband noise. It's not all in just one frequency. It's all over the entire spectrum. You can see from top to bottom. So what that means is we're never going to have a perfectly clean sound here. This is not this is not a candidate for making something that will eventually sound like a studio recording. Not going to happen with our current technology. So all I'm really trying to do is make it less distracting. And removing that hum is one way that's fairly subtle. We can do that. The high pass and low pass filters helped a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I want to reduce uh, some of the remaining noise, again, just to make it less distracting, but not to the point where it starts affecting the timbre of the person speaking. So the way I typically do that is I will check this output noise only box and go ahead and start running through it. And as I run through it, and again, I have the, the reduction set to, let's say, 6 dB. I'm going to sweep this noise reduction back and forth until I start to hear um, some of the more of the voice coming through. You're always going to get a little bit of the voice. That's to be expected. But when you start getting quite a lot of the voice, then you know you've gone too far and it's cutting into the dialogue itself. So that's what we'll do. You also notice visually, yellow is the high noise floor, red is the low noise floor, and green is where you're setting the threshold. So 
I, I think what's happening here is that wherever the green is, everything below that will be, re will be affected by the noise reduction plugin when it processes. So I think the ideal is you're trying to get that green up above the red so you can at least remove all that red. Now, if you go extreme and you take the green all the way up to the yellow, um, you know, things start to get a little bit more crazy and you're going to start taking some of the dialogue as well, in this case at least, because, again, because the voice and the, or the dialogue and the noise overlap so much. So let's go ahead and play through and I'm going to sweep that back and forth. I'm thinking somewhere around 30 is probably going to be pretty safe. So let's go ahead and apply that and see what happens. Okay, first mistake, rookie mistake. I do this all the time. <laughs> I forgot to uncheck the um, output noise only. So it took all the dialogue away and left all the noise. Wrong thing to do. Back in. This time, uncheck the box and apply again. Okay, let's have another listen. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangiosarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. Okay, that's uh, yeah, not great, right? Let's undo that. In fact, let's do undo all the way. Here we are back at the start. So what I'm going to do here is for the entire file here, let's go ahead and again amplify it. A little bit more. Somewhere in there. Let's take it over into Isotope RX and see what we can do there. We'll take the same steps here. You'll note the spectral view is a little bit different here. First we'll pull out our EQ, and I'm going to do the same thing. I've got a low pass and a high pass applied here. For my high pass, um, we went 48 decibels per octave. I kind of already tuned that. I don't need to show you the whole thing again, but that's the main idea. And you can see visually here, this this one's a little easier to see, that you've actually has have reduced some of that low frequency stuff. Um, the high frequency stuff as well. In fact, we could do another pass if we wanted to turn the high pass off. Let's just see if we can affect um, a little bit more of that high frequency stuff. Yeah, you can see it affected it a little bit more. So I want to be careful not to cut into the dialogue, but um, so there's some EQ. That's a, is that going to be audibly different? Eh, going to be hard to tell on that one. But that's the first thing. Let's take a look at this hum. We do have a dehumming plugin here. The interesting thing that's different about this one here is I can actually tell it, hey, suggest to me where I should set them. And it actually already sent, it set the uh, frequency for us, 811 hertz. Um, and it also set the harmonic here. Okay, we can change the slope of this too. Again, because the second one is uh, just pretty much as extreme as the first one, we can go ahead and change the slope here. Let's go ahead and process and see what happens. Wow, look at that. Let's see how it sounds now. We lost our previous dog, Apollo. Okay, that actually sounds a little too extreme. What I want to do is drop this down. Let's say again, maybe minus, let's try 30. We didn't try that the other time. That might still be extreme. We're getting kind of this hollow sound almost. We lost our previous dog, Apollo. Let's undo that. Let's try minus uh, 20. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangiosarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning. Okay, I think we'll go, we'll go with that. Um, what, I don't, what I think you don't want to do is leave a gaping hole there, so you want to be subtle. We could probably be even more subtle than that, but in the interest of time, let's move forward. So next up, we're going to bring in this vocal denoise. I think this works quite a bit better than the one in Audition. Um, it actually does make a difference. This one's a little bit more sophisticated in terms of the algorithms it's using. We could have it learn the noise print. Um, I would probably never 
I generally try not to do more than six decibels of reduction on any one pass, but I'm not afraid to do multiple passes. So let's go ahead and do a preview here and see where this takes us. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangial sarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. Great. Okay. Let's have it learn again. Now, you could also use this adaptive mode where it just figures out where the noise is on its own. Um, so that's another option. I just did the learn. Either way works. Go ahead and preview again. This dog, Apollo, to hemangial sarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. Okay, let's stop there. See, this is not as prominent as it was. Let's go back to audition. Let's play the original. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangial sarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. And the processed audio. We lost our previous dog, Apollo, to hemangial sarcoma when she was diagnosed at the beginning of April. Okay. So there's an example. Um, is this the perfect process? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> we did definitely cut into her dialogue some, but we did also manage the noise so it's not nearly as distracting as it was. So there are some things that you can do. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, I would say probably, and I realize you're probably just volunteering here, um, but one thing that might be really helpful for the folks that are doing the recordings is to just give them maybe a 15-minute uh, mini course on how to uh, they don't have to change a lot. They, they could probably change just a few things and make a massive difference because this, this again, at the start of the file, or when you first open the file, it sounds like there's a jet engine behind this person. <laughs> and there are some good ways uh, with that Rode Podcaster microphone to reject some of that noise. Move the person just a little bit. Um, go into a room that doesn't have the biggest air conditioner, or if it's possible, turn the air conditioner off just for the period of time that recording. Um, block the air register that's sitting right above the person with a poster board or something. Um, there are lots of things you can try to potentially help the recording so you wouldn't have to, you know, kind of mess with it in post like this. And in the end, you'd probably get a better result. So there are some thoughts. Steve, thanks again for the question. I really appreciate that. And again, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And I hope everyone's having a great week, making some good recordings. We'll talk to you again next week.